Hi, this is Mark. Thanks for choosing to listen to another episode of Explore Finland Radio Show. This episode took quite a long time in the making. The first interviews were recorded back in the summer of 2016, and it was finally published in February of 2018. And some of the last recordings here were were recorded in this month. So uh, apologies to my guests who who did the first interview um, that it's taken so long. Uh, but I always intended to put this out at some time, and I think this is a, a really important subject and a really interesting subject that, that many people outside of Finland don't know anything about. Uh, it's about the evacuation of hundreds of thousands of people from the eastern side of Finland, the, the region of Karjala or Karelia, um, into the rest of Finland. Um, so the first part of the interview is at the annual commemoration of this uh, event called Karjalaiset Paiva, and where I recorded the interview was in in Seinäjoki in 2016. Um, and then I speak to my girlfriend Satu, who's from Karjala, uh, whose family were evacuated, and she just shares some of her experiences. So um, after the music, then we'll get into the uh, into the interviews. <laughs> I'm here today in Seinäjoki. It's the middle of June 2016. I'm joined by Mario Matikainen Kallström, who very kindly has a name badge on to help me pronounce all the names of his Satu Hallenberg and Marku Pulli from Karjalan Liitto. Um, and Karjalan Liitto um, is uh, an organisation that um, commemorates the culture of Karelia in the eastern part of Finland and this is a subject that I think many people in Finland understand and many people outside of Finland probably have no understanding of at all so Maria thank you for joining me today. Hello. Um, I'd like to understand a little bit about the the history of the region of Karelia and why it is that you need to have this annual event to commemorate the culture from that area. Perhaps you can explain to people what what happened in that area. Karelian Liitto, Karelian Association was founded just for for these people who was evacuated from the after the Second World War from Russian and Soviet Union, especially came into part of Finland, and um, it was over four hundred thousand. Uh, Karelian people was evacuated after that and uh, was situated in different places in Finland and this was very uh, or huge thing what happens in Finland because so many people were situated in different part and uh, in that case was Karelian, Karelian association founded for but uh, when, when was the association initially formed? Uh, it was just founded after the winter, winter war in 1940. Yes, okay. So it's... Um, but the second uh, really um, evacuation process was after the, after the 44, right, when okay. the Second World War was finished. Okay, yeah, and I think, I think this is a, a really big part of Finnish culture and Finnish history is the Winter War and with I've, I've read about the Winter War I understand kind of what what happened but many people listening maybe don't understand that while the whole Second World War was going on it was such a large long-term thing that covered most of the world but there was a very localized um, war between Finland and Russia that took place. The Soviet Union. Oh, of course, the Soviet Union. Even bigger <laughs> enemy Even bigger. To, to deal with <laughs> at the time. Um, and the Winter War lasted, was it 135 days? Do I remember correctly? And after, after that, Finland lost... Very huge area anyway, the whole and, Karelia. And you said 400,000 people. 430,000 people, okay. exactly. And I think also this is something nowadays where there is this refugee crisis going on around the whole of Europe with people being moved moved around to think that this is something that happened within one country and what were what kind of experiences did 
the Karelian people face when they when they moved? It depends on in which part they were situated. Uh, especially here in Seinäjoki, they have a different kind of uh, feelings than uh, than in um, these people who were situated in the southern part of Finland in the capital area or who's, uh, who stayed in um, in southern and uh, north Karelia area. So it depends on the place and it depends on the family and uh, area where they were situated. Some of them, some of uh, evacuated people uh, like they um, families and area, but some some of them got very difficulties. Especially my parents, when they came, they couldn't speak Karelian dialect anymore. They have to finish that, so that's why I can't uh, that uh, dialect anymore. Where did your parents move to? They moved to to capital area. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and this is another interesting thing. I, I haven't really experienced the eastern dialect. But from West to East Finland, there's a real difference in, in how people speak the same language. And it's, I, I guess both of those are different to the language that people study from a book. So it's, mm-hmm. it's not, even within one country, it wasn't that straightforward for people. Yes, and uh, of course, the um, food was totally different. Really? Yes, uh, in Karelia, they um, baked uh, bread every day, but here in... Uh, uh, Western Finland, just once a week or once a month, or no, that's that's interesting because I've seen I've seen this um, bread bread baking yeah, uh, where they where mm. they dry the bread and they have them hanging along the ceiling of the, yeah, of the place. Right. Yes. So Satu, you um, you're, you're here with us as well. Um, what about some of the cultural differences? Uh, Mario was talking about food, um, but what about cultural differences between the East and the West? Korean people are more talkative, and I suppose uh, families visited neighbors more than in Western Finland. And so uh, we have uh, more celebrating and parties, and, and the families come together more than in Western Finland, for instance. And that's why uh, the food culture and dressing and housekeeping was different. What about the the way people dress? We're we're here today at the launch of uh, the 2016 Karjalaiset um, Kesä Kesä and there are some women dressed upstairs in some quite traditional clothing. How how is that different between east and west? Is that quite dramatic? Yes, there is a difference because uh, in Karelia the fashion is uh, older. Okay. And uh, to the Western Finland, we got uh, fabrics and uh, models from uh, Sweden, from West. And that's why, uh, for instance, uh, dresses in Karelian um, families were um, more decorated uh, sewing. Yeah. And uh, if you saw the uh, Western national dresses, they have uh, woven and stripes in uh, how many, what's a dress. <laughs> dress, yes, yes. And the hats and uh, all, all these were a little bit different. And Mario, your your parents' experience from when they from when they moved, were there any, any sort of stories that have been passed down to you? I I think uh, these differences were only in the fests and the parties and uh, and like that, not in the normal clothes. And f- and from them for them moving to the the capital region of Finland, was that an easier process? Do you think? Uh, no, I don't think so because uh, the dialect is for so in the capital area you couldn't use any more your dialect, but uh, I think it was the same in countryside too. But uh, different part of Finland depends on you can't be be separated from the huge of the people there. That's a reason. Yeah. And especially for the kids when you were in school, at school. So when you came from different part of Finland, some some of them were, were called Russian kid or like that. Yeah. The actual evacuation of people, it wasn't something they had a lot of time to prepare for, if I understand it correctly. It, yeah. it happened quickly. It was very quickly. Yes, and uh, for these who were 
who came after the war was finished. So 44, you hadn't got any time. So it was a it was a process that started soon after the Winter War, but it really happened much more quickly at the end of the a difference of the part. But especially them then who went back second time, they went back, they built their houses and started a new life there. After that, they had very quick time. Right, okay, so there were some people that moved away yeah. and then moved back, resettled, yes. rebuilt their houses. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they just left their houses and moved again to the west to yes. stay within Finland. Yes. And what did they do with, their, with the houses that they'd built and all their, their lives that, they, that were there? They, who have enough time, they burned their houses, all our soldiers burn they they hold so Finnish houses but some of them they haven't got time to do that either. It was literally it was yes. literally that that mm. quick. Yeah. I heard I heard the stories of mm. people putting as many belongings as possible onto a trailer or something mm. and and then setting fire to mm. the house. To leave as little behind for the for the Soviets that were coming to take the mm. take the land. Especially my father has only his clothes what he has on, him, on really? him, yes, nothing else. Wow, it makes you think. It really makes you think. Yeah. I think I think that you can see the parallels with things that are happening to people leaving, I don't know, Syria and, and places like that right now where they're going with what they can carry. Yeah. And this is something that was happening within, within Finland. And that's why you now have this annual event. So you're the, actually, the, I didn't say before, you're the chairperson of the uh, Karelian League, Karjalan Lito. The letter R in Finnish is very difficult <laughs> for me to get my English tongue around and the people listening are, are used to me having to run at some of these, at these words. But this um, vice versa, our English uh, <laughs> pronunciation is not exactly that. And, it take, and sometimes <laughs> it takes a little bit of time to, uh, you know, to get back into the swing of it again, but... It's, there's nothing wrong with your with your English, and this is it's interesting that you have this event every year. And in a minute, I'm going to go and speak to Marco about exactly what's going on here this weekend. I'm hoping he can help me plan my weekend's activities. Um, but just tell us a little bit about the the event in general. You told me before that it's in a different place each year, but what what sort of things go on generally each year? So each year, we have, uh, we have some summer summer parties. For th- three days, just a week before midnight sun, and um, it's uh, in different places in Finland. So areas they try to get these parties in everywhere every year, and uh, our be in um, board members we decide in which part we'll get it, and we try to go round Finland. So now we are in here in Seinäjoki. And next year we are in the middle of Finland in in Yvaskula. Yeah, okay. And it's, it's last year we were in Karelia, in Lappeenranta. Okay, okay. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because there are there are always a lot of events and parties going on in Seinäjoki every year, but this year there are several one-off events. This is Seinäjoen Superkesä, yeah. Seinäjoki's Super Summer, <laughs> and this is one of those one-off events. So I, it's good for me. But it's here in Seinäjoki this year, and I've had a chance to come and to come and meet you. Um, does the event change each year depending on where you are, or do you just have a different a different program, a different theme or something each year? Basic form form is the same every year, but of course it depends on which where we are. Now we have Komiat Kesäjuhlat. Every event that takes place in Seinäjoki is Komia, something <laughs> yes. or other. That's I'm, I'm right. learning that. Yes. Yeah. But we try to get also the, uh, something uh, what is um, special for this place where we are. So comparing the Karelian things. So like comparing with the, the local culture and the Karelian yes. culture that, yes. that came here. Yes, how it goes together. That's what we try to get in uh, and uh, try to... Um, so also for the for our and uh, our people and uh, lo- for local people because in every place where we are there are also evacuated pe- 
people and uh, and Karelian background. Yeah, that's that's really important actually. That's something I've only just learned recently. I've, I've made a new friend recently. She's been telling me that. Well, she's from Gitte originally, and just the other day she said that her her parents' uh, land actually borders Russia, which to mm. me was like. <gasps> Oh, that's quite close. Uh, but for her, it's just... <laughs> I'm sure many people listening probably think that's quite close. But for her, it's just normal. Um, and, of course, her parents evacuated... Or her grandparents evacuated. They didn't move that far. They're just inside the new, the new border, as it was. And then I've been talking to a few work friends and telling them that I was coming to meet you guys today. And... One of them said, well, you know, there were so many people evacuated that almost all Finns have got some kind of uh, Karelian heritage. Nowadays, yes. Yeah, which is, which is yeah. interesting. So everybody should be going to this Karelian <laughs> Yes, that's a that's good, 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 good yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> but one, one thing that, that somebody did say, and I, I think you might like this, they said that, and it goes back to what you said, Sato, about the, the Karelian people being more talkative. This friend of mine said that the girls from Karelia were so bubbly and had so much personality that the, the men from Pochyma stood no chance and they were, <laughs> they were just bowled over by, by the women that came from the, from the east. So uh, I think we, we can agree that was probably, that was probably true. Um, Maria, thank you for, thank for you. talking to me today. I know you, maybe you have to go off and do other, other duties today, um, but perhaps now I can speak to Marco and find out a little bit about what specifically is going on here today. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Thank yeah. you. So, Marco, you've been sitting there patiently listening to us <laughs> chatting and I was introduced to you as being in charge of everything that's going on here in Sainioki this weekend. Yes. So... And we talked briefly on the phone the other day, and you mentioned there were a few different locations in Sainioki where there are activities going on. Um, but maybe you can tell us some of those some of those things that are, are happening this week, where they're taking place, and what what things are, are going on. Yeah, the the main place where we have our festival is uh, Sainioki Arena, and uh, there are those. Uh, uh, Starting party, yeah, yeah. and and uh, uh, on Sunday we have a day day festival, Päiväjuhla, and uh, and Saturday night we have uh, komiat iltamat. How it could we say in evening English? party? <laughs> yeah. Evening party, yes. As, as we said, komia komia means like handsome. It's a, a local kind of dialect word that is yes. used everywhere. So you're having a, a, an opening opening evening party. Yes. Tomorrow. Okay. And uh, we have the Kerial and uh, uh, market place there in arena where people can buy there are clothes and uh, other kind of carrier and things and of course other, other like of is this on is it Sunday that all of this is taking place or it's, uh, it's tomorrow and Sunday yeah. that, okay. that market place is open. This, this podcast will probably be published after the event, but if you do similar things in other years, then it may be interesting for people to hear this and think about attending the event wherever it may be next year. What, what kind of things are going on during the day that people can see? In the marketplace, the, you can uh, buy some crafts and many Karelian things. And uh, in our association, there are small groups around Finland and and uh, they have came from different parts from Karelia, so they have a little bit different culture and uh, small things that they are selling. And um, then we have also concert competition okay. from Karelian Kuorot. <laughs> yeah, choir. Yeah. Choirs, yes. yes. About 12, I suppose, 12 Karelian choirs, and, and uh, that's every, every summer. And uh, then one very famous thing is competition of Karelia pie making. Okay. Karelian piirakka. Karelian piirakka. This is, a, <laughs> yes, this is yes. a Finnish delicacy. Who wants to explain to people what, how this thing is made and what, it, what it's made of? Oh, it's so, so special. You have to come <laughs> to the competition. You really have to come there. And um, 
that has also um, a standard from European Union. Okay. How to make it, which are the um, comp uh, components, yes. and with size and so on. But you have to do, come to see it. And it tasted, oh, really good. Yeah, I think I've, I've never <laughs> had fresh. Yes. And uh, in, in this competition, there are also different series for children and for adults and so on. And um, that happens every summer. And I, I understand that you have a celebrity or a VIP competition. Yes. And yes. the friend of the podcast, uh, Olli Pekka Garjalainen, is taking part in this yes. competition. <laughs> so maybe I'll try and track him down. He was in the, the se first season of the Explore Finland radio show talking about the Olympic Training Centre at Kuotene. Mm -hmm. So it'll be nice to see him with his apron and his chef's hat on cooking the, uh, the, or making the pierak. Yeah, I'm not sure if he has some background, uh, grandparents' background uh, history mm -hmm. in Karelia or something. I don't know. But um, also the major of the city, Seinäjoki, will be there in this competition. Yes. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this could be interesting. This could be the thing to, to make yeah. sure I come along and, and okay. see. Yeah, and then there is a big exhibition in, in Lukio, in the yes, high school. Okay. Yeah. And the, uh, the association, uh, small associations of different cities from the past Karelian area, they will uh, pronounce uh, things of their own uh, happenings. And, and for instance, magazine Jakiman Sanomat has been um, published 110 years and now they have a celebration tonight here in Seinäjoki and they have a big uh, table in this uh, Lukio Is this exhibition. a Karelian newspaper or yes. magazine? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes okay. and uh, still publishing. And all these people who have background in Yakima, Lahdepohja or Lumivara area, for instance me, we are uh, interested of, of the history and nowadays things and uh, this is very important. It has. I think uh, six papers per year yeah, comes okay. from this magazine. And they have also uh, exhibition in, in Lukio. I, I, in, in the second season of the podcast, I visited the Emigrant Museum mm -hmm. in Perasenioki. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, this was about a year ago from where we are now, mm -hmm. and we talked about uh, emigration in general in one episode. In another episode, we visited their world of trails where they're, they're rebuilding houses. And at the time, they were starting to put together uh, an exhibition about people who had emigrated from east to west. And I, I haven't been to see it yet, but I, uh, I think I will get down there and, and have a look. Because there's a permanent, um, a permanent exhibition yes. of, of some of the things that we've been, yeah. we've been talking about. And one very uh, special thing... Uh, because in Lukio there are many exhibitions of these different cities of, from Karjala. Uh, it means that the uh, background in our association comes also from the wisdom of our political leaders during the uh, war time. Because from Viborg, people get new places, for instance, uh, around Helsinki or Lahti. And from uh, northern Karelia, uh, people who had um, religion orthodox. They got uh, new places around uh, Savo, around Kuopio. So the neighbours, you found the past neighbours in the new area. Yeah, okay. And that was the beginning of our association. The small groups, they come together and started uh, to have some tarina ilta, yeah. some evenings for talking yeah. and to, to sing and to talk and to um, remember the own old home. Yeah, and the old and the, the, the old culture. Yeah. However yeah. however different it may yeah. have it may have been. And, and what you were just saying there is basically that people from northern Karelia mm -hmm. moved to the north of Finland, if yes. you like. And people from the south moved across to the south. Yeah. Them. And uh, for fishermen they had places uh, around the coast and so on. Yeah, okay. And uh, most important I think was this that you got neighbours near to you. Yeah. Marku, you live in Vaza now, yes. which is quite quite close here to uh, to Seinäjoki. Yes. Um, but clearly, you, you have family from the from the east. Any any experiences from from them that you know? No, no. Since my my parent, my father came from Karelian area, Sortavala, mm -hmm. and uh, 
when you talked with Mario about how quickly people have to move out, uh, Sortavala was area that was not quite near the front line, so they had a little more time to get so so they get some some things with yeah. them. But uh, in many places, people came. They had only. 15 minutes. Really? That's yes, 15 that. minutes. Two hours or something. Or two hours or uh, uh, so. Mm. It it was very 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 difficult. Yeah, it's incredible. I think it's I I, I find the whole thing unbelievable anyway. But I'm sure the people listening will be here. Some will be hearing this for the first time, and it will. It makes you think. It makes you think. Yeah. Um, so for this weekend, I need to find the Karelian Piraka competition. Yes. What else should I be making sure I look I look for? On Sunday I think you have to uh, come to the city of Seinejoki and wait when the clock is 12 o'clock. We start marching. With flags. With ah, flags. Okay. Yes. And national dresses. And there will be about, oh, what do you think Mark? 200, Maybe 200? 200 flags usually. Yeah. Uh, and what are, what are these flags? Uh, Karelian flags. Karelian flags. Uh, our um, Sukuseura uh, family, family associations, family associations mm-hmm. have their own flags okay. and local mm-hmm. associations like uh, Seinäjoen Seudun Karelian Seura, mm-hmm. they have their own flag. So all the Vaasan, different, all the different, all the different flags. Yes. Uh, Karelian League have yeah. their own. Yes. Yeah. There yeah. are very many uh, red, <laughs> black flags <laughs> yeah. and yeah. Okay. Yeah. of course other colors. Uh, Sukuseurat, they they usually have different colors too. Yeah. Them. Okay. And where where is the march taking place? Through the town center. It starts from uh, Lakeuden Risti. Yeah. Okay. And goes to Arena. Yeah. Okay. And then Arena is where there are activities going on through yeah. the day. Yes. Okay. That and actually, good. flags and also national dresses. Yes. Because yeah. people, I think there will be about thousand uh, and five hundred people marching. And uh, there you can see the difference between Western and uh, Eastern national dresses. Yes. Most of the women are dressed like that, and men have black trousers and white shirt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, that, that, that sounds that sounds like quite a good way to get a, to get some nice photos to accompany yes. Yes. and to start the day. Twelve o'clock yes. is a very civilized time to yes. have okay. a parade. <laughs> and welcome so. to sing with us, because I suppose mm, our marching. People might sing when they are walking. Okay. okay. <laughs> I hope that will be uh, fun. Uh, for, and for that, before I go over the weekend to go exploring the uh, the Karjalaiset Kesahjuhla, um, Satu, Marku, thank you very much for talking to me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, this is Mark. We're back in 2018 and during the interview with Mario, Satu and Marco, uh, I mentioned my friend and my friend is no longer my friend. She's my girlfriend. It's Satu um, and she's here with me now. And I, I said that, that she was from Karyala and while we've been listening to the the recording today and just talking, getting to know her, I've I've learned uh, more about her family's experiences. So... Satu, thank you for agreeing to talk to me. You're welcome. Um, while we were listening just now, um, some of the, the things that were talked about, about families being evacuated, obviously has some resonance for your family. Um, and it was your grandparents that were born in Kariela. Yes. Where, where were they from originally? My mother's parents uh, were from, which is like Karjalan Kannas area. Uh, my grandmother was from Kivennapa, and my grandfather was from Terijoki, and they lived in Terijoki after they get married, um, and that's where they had to leave their home when people were evacuating. So, where the border now is between Finland and Russia, how far across the border did they live? Well, Terijoki was very close to Pietari, Leningrad at the time. Nowadays, to St. Petersburg. Yeah. So when they when they moved from there, east. Uh, so when they moved from there westwards, um, in the interview just now, we heard about people moving, you know, maybe from east all the way 
to the west but your your families both sides didn't move quite so far well my um mother's mother well she they had a baby my aunt was born in Derioki in 1939 earlier that year uh, so this is around the time that the evacuation was taking well, place well uh, she was born in i think february so she was about six months old when they had to leave and like in that interview, people said that they had 15 minutes. I think my grandmother told me that they had an, about an hour. That it's someone came amazing. and said, the Russians are coming. The war has, you know, started and you need to leave. And they left, they left I think it was September, October, 1939, maybe September. So she had like an, like an hour time to... Just pick up some pieces, you know, stuff, clothes and whatever for the baby, for my aunt. Uh, one suitcase, and that was it. And then they left. And everything. They had a home house there that was left behind. Did they leave the house or did they burn it? They didn't burn it. No, okay. It, but it was burned by the Russians. So they, they evacuated in 39. Um, yeah. So that, and that was when the war started. And then there was the big evacuation at the end of the war when Finland ceded this big tract of land yeah. to the Soviet yeah. Union. But they um, left early. And never went back. So I think they were saying in the in the previous interview that some people went back and then had to evacuate yeah. again. But you're... My, my grandparents didn't go back. They were, I think my grandmother said they were taken to Helsinki. And she had this memory of um, the president's wife coming to see them and giving them, like, handing out food and stuff when they were... I don't know, maybe it was a school or something, somewhere where they always taken and they slept together there. And my grandfather was in the army at the time and, and fought the war, so he wasn't with them. This is the Winter War. The, yeah, yeah, the Winter War. For those <clears throat> listening, I'm still trying to find someone to talk to me about the Winter War because it's it's a, a fascinating story of Finland defending itself against the Soviet Union, uh, essentially winning the Winter War and then... As we're talking about now, the evacuation from Karjala, they still lost a big, a big piece of land. So your your grandfather was fighting. Yeah, he was that. fighting and he was wounded, and well, eventually they settled in Gide, where my grandfather worked as a border officer, border control. How, how long was your grandmother in Helsinki? I don't even know months. Okay. And as far as I remember, that she told me they were taken in different places, and and then when my grandfather was wounded, he came back. So he was discharged, and then yeah. they they reunited yeah. as a family and settled yeah. in Kitte, yeah. which is I've been to Kitte with you, um, mm. and you can see some pictures of um, the house that one of such as pairs of grandparents uh, settled in um, in the Explore Finland podcast.com there's a a journal post putting the podcast into practice and it includes some pictures from when you took me to get yeah. there and uh, and actually can see the the border with russia from their beach mm. by or the their beach the beach by their by their yeah. house anyway on the lake um and these are my other grandparents they also were both born in the which is now the russian side but they moved they didn't move so far from their home, so. But they they moved again westwards into yeah. Kite, which of course yeah. is you know, yeah, that part of your family tree. Mm. Did they tell you any experiences of how they were treated? We heard just now that there was a lot of negativity towards the the evacuees. Well, especially my other grandmother, my father's mother, told me that when they were, they had to, of course carry their stuff and they were walking or or horse and carriage thing you know through the villages people weren't nice to them they were shouting at them calling them names spitting they were thought as second grade like citizen they weren't second class citizen they weren't like they weren't liked people didn't like that of course that so many people came and it was four, to, 430 yeah, thousand we heard you had, so it's a big, you had to a big... find them homes you had to find them houses you had to you know find them jobs so and like people had farms and they were cut in little smaller pieces so that people could have a farm and could support themselves and like that and they were all Finns. yeah they were the same yeah they were your own countrymen and they was they were still treated like that so 
And I do remember that my other grandmother, who I spent a lot of... Well, I spent a lot of time when I was a kid, both of my grandparents. So she talked about it, and there were pictures and everything. But I still think it was a kind of an open wound. They didn't... The wound never healed. And like my grandfather, he never wanted to talk about the war. Uh, he had nightmares. Even when I was a kid, he had nightmares. And and it was very touchy subject. And I think that's that's the same with many war veterans. Um, he had his nightmares from the from the actual fighting, I guess. Yeah. And then these these open wounds that your grandmother had would have been the the upheaval of having to to move and and I guess never going back to the town that she grew up in because it was then in another country and it's still in that other country now they never went back um my uh, grandfather's younger sister went there to see the old family where they lived when they were kids was this back which which town was that in uh in Teriyoki Teriyoki yeah and there was nothing there they basically found like the base of the house but everything was just burned and destroyed by the Russians during the war and what how how did that that town then look in general as a town, or did it not really exist anymore? There is Teriyoki there, and it used to be very famous, like the the beaches in uh, Karelankannas. They were famous. They were famous around Europe because there was this long I don't know how many we can check it out kilometers of long beaches where people come, and it was very beautiful. Um, by the um, on the Baltic Sea. Yeah, yeah, and it was this kind of um, Teriyoki was known for these villas, this kind of um, you know Pitsihu villa with this very decorative wooden decorations in the house, and a lot of like like Russian aristocrats and artists and people came and spent their summers there so it was very idyllic beautiful town almost almost cosmopolitan yeah, it sounded, um, with yeah, visitors yeah, coming from, 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 from all europe over. as well and it was all a lot of the places were destroyed and then when the uh, the soviet union took over that culture they as a country didn't care and they didn't really uh, maintain the houses and they kind of deteriorated and did they, did they replace them with the concrete blocks? Well, may, uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, maybe the actual town of Teriyoki. I haven't been there. I've mm. driven along that coastline once, 30 years ago or something. And you can still see some of those villas there, but they're nothing like the area would be if we would still have it, if we would have had it. Just sort of traces or echoes yeah. of, of what it was. What it yeah, and my grandmother said like when she was a, a child in that kind of area... And, and Teriyoki, there were like uh, painter like Ilya Repin, which was really famous Russian artist, painter. He was there, you know. I think my grandmother said that he was walking around barefoot and painting. And and she had a very, of course, the time has passed. And you think about this very, your hometown, like a romantic and beautiful, perfect place. Maybe it was a little bit like that, but. They, it was definitely. I've seen the pictures. Hmm. It's, it was beautiful. And you, you yourself grew up in Gitte in the east, and your your life and your family before we met had moved you to Saint yeah. in the west. Um, but I understand that that people here still notice that you're not you're not a local. Every day, pretty much. Really? What, do, what do they di- say? My dialect. Every, like I'm a nurse, and being with patients. And I'm very chatty and talkative, like apparently all the Korean <laughs> people are. So I talk to them, and especially the older patients. Pretty much everyone says, you're not around here, are you? And I'm like, no. And then this whole story, like, oh, I'm from Kite, and oh, how did you end up here? And people are still amazed, like, how can you move from other side of the country to here? Yeah, they say the same to me. It's, it's like the first thing people ask mm-hmm. is, how, how, why are you here? Well, I met my ex-wife and I came here. And then, uh, why say Nyoki? <laughs> it's often, often the question. Yeah, I'd probably ask you that. <laughs> and fate. But it was fate that brought the two of us yeah. here. Yeah. And now we're, yeah. now we're together. Um, do these people that you talk to, do they have any... 
negative comments or is that is that kind of in the past now are they just curious I, I think they're just curious and i think because i've been here for like over 17 years and i still have the dialect i don't notice it that much but people definitely do they always kind of i think they like about it and very very often when i say i'm from kid there they say oh i've been there so many times oh i know that person do you know him and i'm like yeah well not really <laughs> yeah, well, i haven't yeah. lived there for like 30 years, but I, I get that when people know that I'm from London, mm. especially you speak to Americans. And it's like, you're from London. I know this guy. He's from London. It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a big, big bit place. of a bigger place <laughs> yeah. than there, but anyway. And I think what you've told us is, is really interesting and you've kind of preserved some of your family's memories now on mm. here. So, yes. um, uh, so maybe we'll wrap it up now, but talking about your dialect, I forgot to tell you this the other day, you were talking with your mum on the phone and Evie, my daughter said to me, it's funny, Satya's accent really changes. Her dialect really changes when she's on the phone talking to her mum. So it's clearly, yeah. it's clearly still there. I don't, I don't really realise that or I don't, I don't do it on purpose and apparently it does. And yeah. it's nice. I like, you know, people have different dialects. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Okay, thanks again to Mario, Satu, Marku for their time uh, back in 2016. And then to my lady Satu for giving me some of her memories from her family. I think those two things went together quite nicely. Remember, if you want to keep in touch with me between episodes, then you'll find me on social media, on Facebook, at Explore Finland Radio Show, on Twitter, at, at Explore Finland, um, and also on my website, explorefinlandpodcast.com. You can reach out to me on, on all of these different places and uh, tell me the things that you like about the show, what you don't like. Maybe give me some uh, suggestions for topics. There have been a couple in this season that have come from suggestions from the listeners. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you a shout out at the beginning of the, uh, of the episode. If you make a suggestion that we actually get to cover that topic. Also remember to rate and review the show on your podcast player. That will help me reach more people uh, every every comment every review is uh, gratefully received um, thanks again for listening to explore finland radio show and until the next episode goodbye